Welcome back to the Make or Break Shop. This week we're gonna take a look at this fairly cheap CNC mill, as well as laser engraver. Let's get into it. So I got shipped this box from Gearbest, and the first part of this video is we are going to assemble this entire thing. And then the second part, there's gonna be timestamps down below if you wanna check those. We're gonna be running it through spaces and seeing what it can actually make. So if you wanna see the assembly, let's jump into it. All right, let's see what all this comes with. All right, we got some instructions for, I guess, their custom software. We've got a part list. This is for the CNC 3018 Chinese. Looks like we've got some type of rail support, power, power block, USB cable, bits. Hardware, more hardware, computery things, wrenches. And I guess this is the software, which I don't have a CD, DVD drive on my computer, so we're gonna have to work around that. All right, this is the brains. So these guys are actually 3D printed, and here's some more support. All right, some corner braces, rods, some lead screws. So under all of this, we've got our bigger pieces. We've got, there is a little, I'm gonna guess it's like two and a half watt laser protective glasses, right, aluminum extrusion, motors, and then what I'm guessing, this is the Z axis and then with the spindle already attached. It's like one of the ways they're saving money. Uh, this is actually 3D printed. So this entire amount is a 3D print. And then some more of these little things and some plates. So that's what is inside of the box. I am guessing on that CD is a walkthrough and actually how to put it together. Unfortunately, it does not work, but there is a YouTube video by Gearbest on how to put it together. For Gearbest Studio. And so this is going to be the process that I'm gonna be using to put this thing together. I'm not gonna be going into an insane amount of detail on the assembly because they've got some great assembly videos. We're gonna go through this real quick and then I'll uh, hit some points if I'm getting stuck at different areas, maybe it can help out. All right, so let's get into the assembly of this guy. On the pro side of things, this is fairly easy to put together. Overall, the assembly will probably take you a couple hours, nothing super crazy. It is small. That could be a negative depending on what you wanna do, but this, when they talk about having something on a desktop, even though they would be really messy, this actually could be on a desktop, the desktop size CNC, as well as a laser engraver, uh, which is what I have set up on it right now. All right, so let's get into a few of the negatives that I saw when I was putting this together. Not a ton, like I said, the instructions are a little bit hard to follow at times. Now uh, there's different versions of these out there. So you wanna make sure you're looking at the right unit. In this case, this is the AlphaWise 3100. Some things like the motherboard on the back, those change just throughout the year. So make sure you're looking at the right motherboard when you're doing all the connections and hooking everything up. Something else that I had a hard time with is the nuts on the inside of these screws, um, which is what you're gonna use a good bit to assemble these 90 degree brackets, as well as all these things that are getting put on. They are really hard to get to lock sometimes. So you really have to work with them to get them to work. So I was pretty hit or miss with them. Uh, you would have to back them out screw them back down until it finally turned inside of the uh, channel and would lock. A couple other things, this probably helps keep the price down, but they're actually 3D printed parts on this. This guy right here that is holding the threaded rod for the Y axis is 3D printed, as well as the entire Z axis assembly that holds both your laser as well as your CNC spindle. So there's some flex to it. And that was probably the biggest thing overall that I saw. You're really not gonna do anything super crazy hard with this, especially in this direction. 
and there's not a real easy way to get that to lock down. And the last thing that I found a little bit strange on the assembly is the fact the entire motherboard is exposed. In a couple of videos, I actually saw they had a clear piece of acrylic that you would put in between the motherboard and this extruded rod. But in my case, it was just the motherboard. Um, something that actually would be super easy to do is to make a little case that all the stuff could attach to and you could have it sitting on the back of this guy. You could even laser cut it or CNC it. All right, so that was the assembly. Let's get into the actual cutting and engraving aspect of this. Right off the bat, you're not working with a massive footprint. I'm finding you have about 10 and a half inches by six inches uh, usable workspace. So if you're wanting to do cutting boards and stuff like that, you could potentially do it. Just know that it's gonna be sticking off the front and the back. So in terms of controlling this thing, it comes with a couple pieces of software. The first is Gerbil Control. Uh, um, it's pretty basic CNC control, but the design tools inside of it uh, are not super great. So if you're wanting to create designs inside of the software, what I would actually recommend doing is using Easel. Easel is put out by Inventables, which is the XCARF CNC, which is one that I have. So in my case, I hooked it up made sure I was working with the right bed size, and then I could do designs from there and just use that whole process to control this thing. All right, so let's get into some of the drawbacks for the machine. If you're wanting to do engravings on small cutting boards or small cup holders, um, this thing is gonna be able to do that. You can put in a bunch of different bits. They provide you uh, with several of the, actually the exact same bit. Um, this is just like a V carved bit that's just one flute. So they're gonna wear out pretty quickly, but you can use other third-party bits. So I got this from Inventables, or I get actually a lot of my bits today from Tools Today. So this guy comes with a collet that takes eight inch bits. Uh, so that's the actual shaft. Another thing to keep in mind is your total Z axis range uh, is not a ton once you get the bit in there. A couple other things that you're gonna find with larger CNC's that this one doesn't have. Um, one of the big ones is limit switches. So all those do is it won't let it run into one of the ends. I've actually done that a ton of times with this, trying to figure out the software where I'll go all the way to the left or all the way to the right and it keeps trying to go. The gears are still trying to turn it, um, but it can't go any further. So eventually I'm gonna wear out um, these motors if I keep doing that. So we're trying to cut out a 3D shape. And I think I'm starting to run into some of the limits that this thing has. So that was way too fast. You can actually see that thing flex when it first started. So we're gonna drop this feed rate down by almost 75%. Try it again. First off, I tried adjusting the speeds to get this thing lower and lower, but I was still getting burn in, which did not make any sense. And I finally slowed it down, and apparently I had it wired for the reverse direction for the bits I was using. You can see the bits that they provide. It doesn't matter what direction it's gonna be spinning, but I am using more like a normal drill bit, so it's very directional. So it needs to be going this way, and in fact, it was going reverse. So that's why all the burning was happening. So I got that fixed. I was still running it really slow. I would be able to eventually cut out a 3D shape. You can do it. It's just gonna take a really long time and the passes that you're gonna have to do are gonna have to be really shallow. So I really think if you're using this machine and carving out letters or designs, but nothing that is really deep or you're wanting to hog out a lot of material to have something flat. So I really think engraving is gonna be your best bet for this type of machine. So let's talk about the laser portion of this. This actually was really cool. I didn't even realize this was coming with this machine. This is a two and a half watt diode laser as opposed to a CO2 laser. And my CO2 laser is actually right there. It's a lot less powered as a result. So you can do a lot of engraving with this, but you can actually do some cutting. This is mostly with paper. Uh, you're not gonna be able to cut through quarter inch plywood uh, unless you just let it sit there the entire time. You might as well just use the actual spindle with a bit on it if you're gonna cut out wood but you can do cool laser engraving. So if you wanted to uh, laser engrave text and you wanna get really precise, it's gonna let you do super detailed stuff. With the software, it comes with its own software. With the way this software is set up, and I'm not sure if you can change it, it basically moves over to a spot, shoots the laser, moves up to a spot, shoots the laser. And so it's almost like it's like bop, 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 all the way across. 
I have used Lightburn, which is a great piece of software. There's a 30 day free trial if you want to check it out. I use it with my bigger laser and you can do just kind of your normal laser cut. So the laser starts and it moves across. So you control the power as well as the speed. So I gave this clear acrylic, polycrylic a shot and it's not looking like it has done anything to the surface, maybe just a little bit. So after some research online, basically what I found is you can't cut clear acrylic really easily there with a diode laser. I'm actually burning into the paper underneath. It's going straight through the clear acrylic. What you can do is actually get black acrylic and that's gonna absorb that energy and either engrave it or eventually you could cut it out if you do enough passes. And so if you wanted to engrave clear acrylic, you would need to use a CO2 laser which is this guy. You can get smaller versions of these. K40 is the one that I've seen a lot of people modify. So you're gonna need to get something different than that. But really for wood or cardboard or even paper, I really think this diode laser is gonna do a fairly good job for you guys. So if you're looking to engrave small pieces of wood, whether those are coasters or really small cutting boards, you're wanting to personalize them with initials or names, it's gonna do a pretty good job for hardwoods, especially softwoods. If you're going really slow and you're doing mostly V carving is where you're gonna have your best bang for your buck. Or you want to do some cool engraving on paper, uh, you could use that diode laser. It's gonna work really well. So I would definitely check this out. If you guys are interested, there's links down below. This is gonna be a really good entry, pretty cheap, just a few hundred bucks on getting into this whole world. You're gonna get to experiment around with a lot of the software and kind of see what you really need if you want to scale it up. Speaking of scaling up, so that guy, so that's my CO2 laser 50 watt. I've done a couple videos though. I've really put that thing through its paces from the setup as well as all the different types of things you can engrave with it. I'll see you guys over there real quick and we're gonna talk a little bit more about what a bigger laser could potentially do inside of your shop. All right, until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.